This is lesson 7.3. We're going to talk about angles in a circle. So if we want to talk about two radii that are going to form an angle. It's going to create a central angle. So I'm just going to outline that in our diagram on the bottom. So a central angle is going to go from edge to middle, edge to middle. So that is our central angle. And the central angle is always created by two radii. So the radii will be the same length. Then we get an inscribed angle. An inscribed angle is formed from two chords. So it is formed by chord BC and chord AC. So our inscribed angle is up at angle C. Inscribed angles with base points from the same arc. Let's see. Base points from the same arc will always be identical, which is congruent. So, inscribed angles that come from the same base points on the arc. So, what that's showing is this. I'm going to show you the example as I move my diagram here. So we notice the central angle, and remember we want to use three letters. So three letters I'm going to use for my central angle, like yellow, is A, O, B. So angle A to O to B. Inscribed angle, A to C to B. Angle A, C, B. What you're going to notice is the first two letters are the same, and the last two letters are the same. The reason they're the same is because those are the arc points. So A and B, those are the arc points. What it means by arc points is that these are the points on the end of the circle that we use to create those lines. That's what it means by their base arc points. Okay. So if I've got another angle that's going to come from those base points, it's going to be the same size as this inscribed. So let's say I say that inscribed angle is 20 degrees. Well, if I went to the side and went down to that other end again, that's a pretty silly line there. So if I went up and then back down, every angle I make that goes to the edge is going to be the same size. Even though it doesn't look like it, they're all going to be identical in size if they're coming from the same two base points. Okay? So I could draw a whole bunch of them so it looks like a, like a fan almost even in there. All right. So central angle and inscribed um, angle property. So the inscribed angle, let's find our central angle actually, if that stands for. So the central angle goes to the middle. So there's our central angle. So we're going to label the central angle as angle BOA. You could put AOB, you betcha. As long as the O is in the middle. All right, the inscribed one comes from the same base points, but it's going to go to the edge. If it goes to the edge, it is a inscribed angle. So we're going to label this one BCA or ACB. And again, we're going to notice that the arc letters are the same. Okay? So what arc did they subtend from? Well, that's the arc, arc AD. Okay, we don't have to say clockwise or counterclockwise. We just have to say what letters form the arc. Well, the letters that form the arc are A and B. Okay, this is the inscribed property uh, rule that I was looking at, this one right here. So, this one says, we have the same base points, and we reach the edge. They will all be the same size. So if I say angle B is 30 degrees, that means so is angle C and so is angle D. Okay? You could make an M, another one that hits the edge. It'll be the exact same size. Okay? So you could make a whole bunch of them. I could throw a couple more in there for the same base points. As long as they go to the edge, 
they will be the same size. Okay? You can make it look like a fan, sort of. All right. We just want to back up here to the diagram above. The central angle, I'm going to show you that as, by looking at me. I'm going to put my fingers together as an angle, and I'm going to put my forehead as the center of the circle. So if we have this kind of angle, that means we have a central angle. If I take my fingers off my forehead and I reach to the top, that's called an inscribed angle. Okay? But do you notice they come from my elbows? And my elbows are the base points of the arc. Okay? So we have central angle, and then we have inscribed angle. Okay? Now, here's the rule. The one that goes to the center is two times bigger than the one that goes to the edge. So if I said to you, the one in the middle, the central angle is 100 degrees, how big would the edge one be? 50. 50. It's half as big because the middle one is two times bigger. So I'm just going to draw another diagram to show you again. So here's our circle going to the middle. If I say that's 40 degrees, here's my base arc points. My inscribed angle will be how big? 20 degrees. It's going to be half as big as this guy. Okay? So the example I gave you was when I was pointing to my forehead was 100. So if that middle one's 100, the edge one has to be 50. It's going to be half as big. So now, if I give a different one and I say, okay, here's my big angle here, and we're going to say that guy's 70. So how big is my center angle then? 140, thank you. So this guy's going to be 140. He's two times bigger than 70. Okay? All right, let's take a look at our bow tie rule. If we look at the bottom of your page, we've got something called the bow tie. Now the bow tie rule is just the inscribed property. If they come from the same base arc points, they'll have the same answer. So if I use these guys as my arc, and I outline my angle. There's one angle, angle B. Now I'm going to do another angle. What angle did I show you? Angle A. So they're coming both from C to D, and I'm going up and then back. So these two have to be identical. So how big would angle B be then? He is also 40. So what we do with our bow tie, so a angle B is 40 degrees. So the rule with the bow tie is the top two are going to match, and then the bottom two will match. So this guy is going to be 30 degrees. So angle D is 30 degrees. Now, we can find the other missing angles. If I were to outline a triangle, I'm going to outline a triangle in green. So here's a triangle. What do we know all triangles add up to? 180. 180 on the interior for their angles. So if I know two of them, 40 and 30, that makes 70. How do I find that other one? You add to all that's left and subtract from 180. So we're going to have 180 minus 70 degrees is 110 degrees. So this one right here is 110. And what do we know about the guys across from each other? They're equal. They're identical. So that means this guy over here is 110 as well. Okay? Now, do we see a straight line? Everybody take a look. I'm going to draw a straight line in red. Here's my straight line. What do we else know that straight lines add up to? They also add up to 180. So if they add up to 180, I've got 110 here. Can I figure out this little piece? Yeah. It would be, not half of 110, 110 plus the little piece have to equal a straight line of 180. So we're going to take 180 minus the 110, and we're going to get 70 degrees. And so 70 degrees is there, and it's also here, 70 degrees. Okay? So now we're going to answer the last couple questions. It says C to E to D. So now we got to actually follow it out. C to E to D. So it wants this angle. How big is that angle, guys? 70. Beautiful. Now it wants A to C to E. So A to C to E. 
no, A, E, C. I went backwards, pardon me. So A to E to C, so it wants 110. All right. Let's take a look at the next diagram. The next diagram is kind of meant to fool you a little bit. Do you see a diameter anywhere? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. A to B is our diameter. How do we know that? Edge to edge and something else. Goes through the middle. The minute it goes through the middle, it's diameter. So A to B is our diameter. Is it safe to say that the ones I'm putting ticks on there are radii? Yes, those are radii. So, we have an inscribed angle. I'm going to outline the central angle first. So our central angle is right here in blue. And it comes from my base points A and C. Now, take a look at the green one. I'm going to come up from the same base points, up to B, and back down to C. Does it come from the same base points as that other central angle? Yes. So, can an inscribed angle be formed from a diameter? Yes. yes, it can. Of course it can, for sure. So, let's say this guy right here is 40 degrees. How big is the inscribed? Half. Good. So that guy's 20 degrees. AO, AOC with the inscribed angle? You betcha. No, no, no. AOC is the center. It goes yeah, to the central. middle. Yeah. Okay, it goes to the middle. All right, the next one, talking about a semicircle. Well, semicircles add to 180 both ways, okay? So that's what we know about a semicircle. Well, there's a property about a semicircle, and it is this. Well, it's the same rule as the inscribed angle property. So the middle angle, if I tell you my middle angle is 120 degrees, how much would the inscribed be? 60. It's half as big as 120. So you take 120, you cut it in half. Okay, well, what if I make my middle angle even bigger? What if I make it exactly 180? Half of it is 90. So if we take a look here, if we inscribe from a semicircle, so from a diameter, we make an inscribe. Every time it's going to form a 90. Even though it doesn't look like it, it has to be a 90 degree angle. And it has to be on purpose because it was formed from 180. Okay? And half of 180 is 90. So each of those are 90 degrees. Okay? So they form right angles. Okay? So they are an inscribed. Okay? So they are inscribed angles. And they are 90 degrees because they came from a diameter. Okay, let's look at the last couple diagrams and then you have a few to do for yourself to practice. All right. If we want to show all the unknown angles, what we've got to do now is we have to identify the diameters and radii. That's the first thing we do. So. L to N is my diameter. So I've got a diameter. What would you call angle M? Angle M right here. We just did this one. So my diameter is 180. That's my central angle, 180. What is my inscribe? 90. Good. So that means angle M is 90 degrees. And it has to be because it was formed from 180. So we can find out all the missing angles. If I know that this guy's 90 and I know this little piece is 29, then I can find this piece. So I'm going to go 90 minus 29, and I'm going to get the teeny piece of that angle. So how big is that teeny piece? Good, 61 degrees. So that guy is 61 degrees. Now, I also need everybody to pay attention. And when we locate our radii, take a look. There's a radius and there's a radius. That means we form an isosceles triangle. If it's isosceles and two sides are the same, so this side here is a radius and so is this, that means their bottom angles have to be identical. So how big is angle N? 
29, good. Now, I could turn my page and redraw, and I've got another isosceles triangle right here. And one of my angles here is 61. So what does that tell me about angle L? It's also 61 degrees. It has to be 61. Okay, because these are radii. Okay, and whenever you've got a radius, the bottom two are going to be identical because the radii are identical. Okay, so two sides the same mean two angles are the same. Okay, two bottom angles have to be the same. All right, let's take a look at the middle angles. Am I able to find out that central angle right there? Yes, because I know two angles in a triangle. If I know two, I can find the third, because what do all three of them have to add up to? 180. So I'm going to take 180 and subtract 29 and 29. And that's going to give me my central angle. So how big is my central angle there? No, 122. So where I've got the blue is 122 degrees. 1, 2, 2. Now the reason is because we've got an isosceles triangle. This, we said those are the same, so these are the same. Okay? They have to be the same, the bottom two. Then we subtract from 180 and get this guy. So look at what he forms. He forms a straight line right here, like this. Well, if he forms a straight line, what do straight lines add up to? 180. Everything's 180, right? So, they add up to 180. I could take 180 and minus 122, and I'm going to get this other angle. So, how big would that other angle be? Sir? 58 degrees. All right. So, that guy there, that other central angle is 58 degrees. How can I check my work? How can I make sure that we were told that right answer? Substitution. Substitution, yeah. Well, if I color in this circle, or circle triangle, if I color in this yellow triangle, all three angles have to add to 180. So I could add 61 and 61 and 58, and they should all give me 108, and they will. Okay? So that's how you can check your work that you did it right. All right, let's take a look at the next one. Here's the next diagram. So, do we see a diameter anywhere? Yeah, we see a diameter. I'm going to outline that diameter for us right here. Now, they showed us that on purpose because they showed us 88. 88 is this little piece right there. Okay? And 88 and X are going to form that straight line right here. And what are straight lines add up to? 180. So we're going to take 180 and minus the 88. And that's going to give us X. So that's going to give us 92 for X. Okay, so X is 92 degrees. Now, if I just took my page and I turned it a little bit this way, I would see my 92 is my center. And then it wants to find W. W is the one to the edge. So what am I going to do to 92 to get the one to the edge? Divide it in half. So what's half of 92? 46. 46. Well done. So W has to be 46 degrees. Okay? Yes? Where do we get the 92? Well, if you take a look here, Tyler, that yellow line is our diameter, right? So they showed us that from here to here is 88. And so if I have that little piece, this whole thing makes 180. So I'm going to take 180 and minus the 88, I'm going to get the 92. Okay? And that's how you have to find that one. All right. You've got a few minutes. The rest is practice time. We have now concluded lesson uh, three and our circles unit. Push pause now and play when you're ready. When we take a look at this diagram, we have arc points A and B. There's our base point. They tell us from A to C to B. Right here is 55. Well, that means that everything that hits the edge then is 55, so X is 55 degrees, okay? Now, the middle one is going to be twice as big, so we're going to take 55 times 2, and that's going to be Y, okay? So Y will be 110. So Y is equal to 55 degrees times 2, because it's always bigger, always, always bigger. 
All right, let's take a look at the next example. So we've got a tangent line, and this shows our tangent property to a radius. So a tangent line to a radius, you know, makes what kind of angle? 90 degrees always. So that means these two are 90 degrees. Which also is a right angle. Yes, that is a right angle. Then we're going to take a look over here because we have a triangle. This triangle right here is going to add to 180. So we're going to take 180 minus 90 and 26. We're going to get 64 degrees. Down here, I'm just going to outline it in green. We have a green triangle. And same thing with our green triangle. It's going to add up to 180 on the inside. So we're going to take 90 and 73 and add them up and subtract 180. We're going to get 17 degrees down here. That guy is 64 degrees. How'd everybody do on those ones? Not too bad. Not too bad, so-so. Okay, let's take a look at the next one. The next one shows the isosceles triangle. Remember, it's isosceles when there's two radii. So I've got a radius here and I've got a radius here. So that means it's isosceles. So that means this angle's got to be the same as that angle. So you're going to take 180 and subtract 96. And that's going to give you how much both of those add up to. So that's going to give us 84. So I need to take 84 and i got to divide it by 2 because I have two angles that share that. So I'm going to have 42 degrees for both of them. Okay, so they're both going to be 42 degrees. How do you guys do on that part? Not too bad? Does this part make sense with your isosceles triangles? You have to look for isosceles triangles. Okay, okay. So back to our bow tie rule. With our bow tie rule, the tops are going to match. So this guy will be 45 and the bottom will be 25 degrees. Now, then we've got to find this angle. Now that angle there, we take 180 or minus our two other angles, we get 110. Now, that's going to match the 110 on the other side, because remember, it's a mirror image. Then, we can find this angle right there, because we have a straight line right there. So, 110 plus that dot have to equal 180. So, that means my dot has to be 70 degrees. So, they come over like that. So, you should have 45, 25, 70, and 110. <laughs> Okay, so 45, 25, 70, and 110. And now we're going to look at number five on the bottom. All right. What kind of line is this line? Hands up. What kind of line is that yellow line? The tangent, the tangent line. And Miles, what do we know about tangent lines that hit a radius? They only touch the outside of the circle. They do only touch once. The point of tangent. So what kind of angle do they make? Oh, they do so make a 90. So that means y is 90 degrees. Now, if y is 90, that means the other two have to also add to 90. So to find angle x, we're going to take 90 and minus 37 degrees. So how big are we going to get for angle x? 53, good. So angle X is 53 degrees. So X is 53 and Y is 90. Let's check the next diagrams on the bottom of your page. Okay, not when they're on the outside of the circle. All right, the isosceles, remember the isosceles triangles come from radii, so they got to stay inside the circle. So in this case, we have quite a few. So if you take a look, we have isosceles right here with this blue triangle, okay? So that means we're going to take 180 and minus that guy. That's going to give us 106. That's going to go there. But it's also going to be how much that guy and that guy add up to. So we're going to take 106 and divide it by 2. And that's going to be those two angles. Now, we're going to do the exact same thing with this one down here. We've got a triangle right there. So we have 106 degrees, we're going to take 180 and minus him, which is our 74, 
Then we're going to take 74 and divide it by 2, and that's going to give us that angle and that angle. So they should look like this. 106, 53, 53, 37, and 37. Okay? And again, it's the isosceles triangle rule. Okay? It's the isosceles triangle rule. Oh. All right. So let's take a look at number seven. Number seven, we've got our central angle, which is 180 exactly. So an inscribe off those same arc points is going to be a 90. So Y is 90 degrees. Now, since Y is 90 degrees, and we also have a triangle, we know triangles have to add up to 180. So we're going to take 180 and minus 39 and minus the 90, and we're going to get 51 degrees for X. So X should be 51 degrees. Check your work. All right, a couple more last diagrams, and we're almost done. Oh, we're supposed to do those. Yeah, you were supposed to do those. Okay. If you didn't get that far, focus now so we can do it together, okay? We don't need noise. So, this is a four-sided figure. Everybody look at the four-sided figure of an outline. So, we got one, two, three, four sides. Four-sided figures add up to 360, the same as a square or a rectangle. So, what do we know about a tangent line that hits a radius? What do we know? Makes a 90. So that means that B is a 90 and so is A. Now, we also know that when we're dealing with tangent lines that are outside and we have four-sided figures, the angles across have to add to 180. So 90 and 90 add to 180. Well, that means 115 and X have to add to 180. So if I take 180 and I minus the 115, that's going to give me x. So how big is x? 65. Good. Now, we have an opposite rule that if x is 65 degrees, oh, that's kind of trippy. If x is 65 degrees, 65 degrees, y also has to be 65 degrees because they're identical. Okay? Anything across will always be identical if it's across an x-intersection. If it's across an x-intersection. Here's the x-intersection. Okay. Last diagram. So, these do not mean that they're the same size. All they're doing is showing the degree. So, we have 35 degrees right here. So, that's 35. Now, that's also the inscribed angle from these base points. So, there's the base points that go to the edge. Now, do I have base points that go to the middle from those same ones? Yes, I have something that goes to the middle. So, how big is the middle one compared to the edge one? How big is the middle one? What would you do to the edge number to get the middle number? You would times it by two. So, we would double that number. So, the, the middle one should be 70 degrees. All right, so let's fill these numbers in. So F to O to E. So I need F O T. E. F to O to E is 70. I need D to O to E. So D to O to E. Well, what do you know about, I'm just going to erase my numbers or my scribbles up here. What do we know about this one right here? If I have 70 degrees and that's a straight line, how big would this part be? And it's not going to be a 90. It's going to be 110. What do straight lines add up to? 180. Well, you're going to take 180 and minus 70, and that's going to give you this point right here. That's the DOE. That's going to give you 110 degrees. Now they want D to E to O. So we want... D to E to O. Well, this is an isosceles triangle because it's made from two radii. So if this guy up here is 35, what do you think this guy down here has to be? 35. Good, because he's isosceles. So this guy is 35. Okay, this concludes unit 7, lesson 3. <laughs>